it see the thing about it is even though it might not feel like it's the easiest thing thing to do but you know that it's the best thing to do yeah. mm -hmm. you know and some people are true is it some people are truly in trouble some people um, um, um have to watch certain things and, and, and how to do certain things they feel like it's a need they feel like a necessity but truly it isn't a need you know it isn't an, it isn't a necessity to fill your your mind with with all things that, that, that don't promote godliness and you believe there are some Christians who believe that it's okay to watch certain things to listen to certain things to listen to things that don't promote in whatsoever the character of God I mean how if you, if how in the world you could you could you could you could be a Christian, you know how in the world we could be Christians and yet we find ourselves entertained entertained by th by wickedness entertained by un by ungodly you know you know how how can we we find ourselves you know um, how can we entertain ourselves with such filth that Satan plays before our eyes how can we sit there and watch people being murdered where's our heart where's our sympathy. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the thing about it is by continually watching it that our heart becomes hard and we see everything as nothing. We see, we see when somebody falls, we see, we see it as a nothing. Our heart has become hardened, you know, and, 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 and that's because of what we see in the media, in bad media. But can this addiction be overcome? Yes. March chapter 26, 19 verse 26. March chapter 19 verse 26, Jesus says, it says, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And I say amen. And then want to explain it. The verse? Yes. Well, what I noticed in that verse was, Notice that Jesus said it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle not for a rich man to enter into, enter into the kingdom of heaven. But but yet, even though as a rich man will hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven, he says that it's still possible for God to save that person, despite that. Amen. Amen. That's serious, you know. Um, you see, it's still possible for... The person to be, to saved, be saved, despite that. Yeah. Despite, despite, despite... Despite the love of money or whatever mm -hmm. controls them. Yeah, you know, and even though, even though, even though a person may be in, 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 in deep grave sin, God is still able to save us from, you know, our sins. But the question is, should Christians use the media? Should Christians use the media? And what for? Should Christians use the media? Yes. And if so, what for? Do you go to Mark chapter 16, verse 20? I mean, Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark, so, that was Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And basically how, how um, it said, should Christians use the media? Um, yes, we should, and we should use it to preach the gospel. Like I said before earlier, we are using the media right now at this moment to preach God's gospel. You know, um, it seems to me with Mark chapter 28, verses 18 to 20, saying, it says that Jesus came and spake unto them, unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore, and what? Teach all nations. Now, we have two for two hands. Mm -hmm. How do we get to all the nations, Jesus? Before but he comes know, back. Before he comes. But you know what Jesus has already done? He has shrunken. It's like he is like, not saying that he has, but he is like he has shrunken the earth. Like everything is like, um, um, we, could, we could reach certain places um, that we couldn't reach to. In, in, like like now, we could reach we could reach all the way to England in five minutes. Exactly, and not not only that, but how technology, how technology is, has connected the world. You know, you could be talking to your um, auntie and you in the Bahamas, and she in um, the the states, and she could hear you clearly. Yeah, you know, um, you, you could be here, and someone inside the bus, someone inside their homes could be hearing us clearly. 
And Jesus said, if you hear my voice, what do harden not your heart. So Jesus is using, is, 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 is giving men the knowledge and the understanding on certain things. So as knowledge increase, the same knowledge that they, it's just like, it's just like when, when it was time for um, um, Paul and them to preach the gospel. You know, Rome, Rome, they, 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 they made roads. And the roads, by using the roads, Paul and they, they could uh, they could easily get from town to town, etc., etc. So, it's the same thing that God has done for us. He has made the way, he's made the provision for us as people of God to preach and to proclaim the good news. I say the good news of Jesus. Well, I'm going to put it now before we go to our next question. Just like how the radio station can be heard all around the world because of this app, because of the internet called TuneIn app. Everyone all around the world, if they have that app, they can listen to this radio station all the way in the Bahamas, even if they aren't over here. Our next question, our last question, PJ. What type of media should we as Christians place our attention upon? What type of media should we place our attention upon? Our I like a bad one. <laughs> well, if you say a uh, question, you should directly go to the good type of media. Finally, brethren, what's oh, Philipp <laughs> Philippians four verse eight? Yes. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. You know, you said something, Paul. You say if you are a Christian, you should um. Some some people saying that you should, you know, um. Uh, want the good type yeah. of of media. But like, if you're a Christian, or if you trying to be, or if you um, you know, profess to be a Christian. If you seeking the life of Christ, I mean, I think some people might disagree with me because maybe like, just because I say I'm a Christian, just because I'm listening to these things, don't mean I'm not a Christian or whatever. Mm, I go to church every Sunday. True. I go to church every Saturday. I'm a Christian because of that. I think I think we should we should um, um tie a little while along on the same point. Does being a Christian mean that everything I listen to, everything I say? Should be about God. Yes. Most, mostly. Beca mostly? Because like ninety nine, ninety nine. Wait, <laughs> this is. I don't mean it like. I don't mean it that way. But I mean. I understand. You don't. You don't have to be restricted. I mean, it's like. Oh, I understand what you mean. Like everything that you say have to be dealing <laughs> exactly with God. Yeah, but everything that you say shouldn't be bad. But it shouldn't yeah. be like glorify God. Though. Yeah, it shouldn't like be glorified. And say, because everything that you do, people are watching mm -hmm. everything that you do that you say. And if you just like somewhat glorifying Satan and you say you're a Christian, but you listen to all these bad music. Like when I was in school, um, the children said they're Christians, but they would listen to like Seven Adventists. That was like Seven Adventists would shock me more than the Sunday Christians because I'm, I was thinking when I was younger that they should know the truth more. They would be saying that there are certain Adventist Christians and stuff like this, and but yeah, they would just still be listening to all these bad music and stuff in school, all these rap songs and all type of cursing and stuff in it. But yeah, they would say that they're a Christian. I'm like, um, how? Yeah. Because like they they don't they don't understand that they're being a bad witness for the children mm -hmm. who weren't Seven Adventists in the school with us. Mm -hmm. So you have to like, you have to think about how people are gonna be watching you because. Behind your back, they would be saying that you aren't actually a real Christian. But then in front of you, they might be like, joining along with whatever mm -hmm. you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You won't believe, um, if if um, if you claim you're a Christian, and you take part in in in, in, in the filth that other people do, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's it'll be very hard to witness to them, you know, because even very. though. Even though they 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 understand that hey okay you're a Christian they be like but they, I'm used to this exactly they ex <laughs> they, they expect you to, to listen to look at to contemplate on things that are heavenly not to take part in their filth in their filth they expect us to be different believe it or not and only <laughs> only like 
kind of close experience I ever come with that was like when I was trying to witness the boy when I was in school, he could ask me if I think I'm perfect. And I'm like, he's, because I trying to witness him. He's saying, oh, so you know all about the Bible, you know everything in the Bible, and you think you're perfect just because like you don't do all these different things or whatever. And I'm like, no, I know I'm not perfect, and I don't know about the whole entire Bible. Like, I don't know if you expect me to or whatever, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, like, I'm just trying to witness you and get this point across because, like, I know that you are wrong with this, so I'm trying to show you the truth. Mm-hmm. You know, um, even though we are not perfect, by God's grace, the, 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 like, aim, we're trying to be. The aim should be for, for perfection. And persons would see that inside our lives, that faithfulness, you know what? Um, you know, every day, this boy. He just getting better. He just getting better. This girl, she just getting better. She just getting better, because Christ is with that individual. Um, I found this um quote online that I read for the last thing that I'm gonna say, I guess. Um, with this man who was addicted to TV, I didn't get his name, but this is what he said. He said, "I have no way to prove this, but I'm sure it's true. Nobody on their deathbed ever wished they'd spent more time watching TV." That's mainly why we no longer own a television. Life is short, uh, and there are far too many activities that are more important and fulfilling than sitting in front of a television for hours on end. That's not to suggest you should eliminate TV, television from your life completely, but over the last few years, I've come to see it as something that's best placed at the edge of life rather than the center. I didn't always feel that way. In fact, there was a period of my life when I watched nearly six hours of my day watching television. When evening rolled around, I'd park myself on the couch, turn on the television, and vegetate till I fall asleep near midnight. Eight hours later, I'd wake up with the TV still on and me still feeling tired. When you do the math, I'd, it's rather shocking. Six hours per day adds up to 2,190 hours over the course of a year. 91 days, three months, three months per year. Sitting in front of a television, hypnotized, tuned in, but zoned out. Living in a make-believe world while the real world passed me by. And this is him when he was coming to terms with, the, with his addiction. Because like how you were saying, most people don't actually come on and say they are addicted. But he decided, come on, he said, Although I failed to acknowledge it at the time, it's clear now that watching television had become a full-blown addiction for me. An escape mechanism from the deeper wounds, challenges, and problems I was refusing to deal with in my life. So basically, sometimes when people are watching TV so much, they're just reusing it as some type of escape so they wouldn't have to deal with the real world, or they don't have to do their bills or whatever, or like if they're getting bullied or something like that. He say he used TV to distract himself from the shame and embarrassment he felt about some irresponsible financial decisions and their resulting fallout. I use it. I use it to avoid facing my fears about stepping out into the world, connecting with others, and fulfilling the higher purpose to which my soul was calling. I use it to fill the void of an otherwise empty life, a life barely li- lived by a soul knocked to his knees and struggling to get back up. In short, my life was a mess. My self-esteem was short, and while TV may have provided a short-term escape from that reality, it ultimately kept me locked within within it. Said another way, instead of using my time and energy to deal with my problems and create a better life for myself, I was wasting it on the television. Yeah, I think that's all I can do right now because we only have a minute left. So, you will sing our prayer song now. Stop for a moment, peace, just be still, you are an heir of his will. If you believe when you pray, and you pray in Jesus' name, the prayer that you pray, the prayer that you pray, the prayer that you pray, the answer's on its way, the answer's on its way. The memory verse of do it come from? Psalms thirty four sixteen. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the um, the re- remembrance of them from the earth. 
And the best media is the Bible. Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this program. I thank you for bringing us here safely. And I thank you for those who are listening. I pray for a blessing. I pray that what we have said will be a blessing to others and that it will remain with them and with us. I thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.